Hi, welcome to my semi blusterous day. And I'm in Cota de Casa, Orange County. I'm on the ninth hole on the tee box of our north course. And this is a, one of the highest points on our go golf course in Cota de Casa. And today we're going to talk about, learn everything you want to know about our weather station. This guy right here in the middle of the fairway. We'll see why it's here, what the devices measure, and how you can download the information from the comfort of your own home. Now this here is the WeatherMax 3000. It's installed by the California Department of Water Resources and is part of the California Irrigation Management Information System, or what we know as CMIS. Now data is collected to help agriculture people and farmers and people growing grass and golf courses to know all about the temperature and the humidity and the rainfall and the wind speed, everything else you want to know about your little microclimate where you're growing your crops. Now this weather station, this guy, it was installed on October 7, 2015. It, seat, it sits uh, 846 feet above sea level on our fairway. Its latitude is 33 degrees, 37 feet. Longitude, 117 degrees, 35 feet. It's known as station number 25 in the CIMIS database. And the prevailing winds run southwest. It's ideally situated because the homes are pretty far away to the, uh, we'll call it the west. And the winds flow this way mostly, call it southwest, and these homes are pretty far away too. So it has a really good open area to get a nice accurate measurement about what's going on in our fairway, on our golf course. So with that said, I'll show you um, the individual parts and we'll talk about e what each one does. So hang on, because this is very exciting stuff. All right, so let's uh, talk about all the parts here. Up on top, way up there, now that is a rain gauge. And down here on the left, spinning around, that's a anemometer. Over here, that's the wind vane. This uh, cylindrical thing, it measures uh, temperature and humidity. Up here, this flat device with the sensor is a pyranometer. It also has solar panel here. On the bottom, it might be buried, is a soil thermistor. Sometimes you see them exposed with the sensors in the ground, but in our case, maybe the whole thing's underground. And here, on this side, this is the data logger here, and here is a lightning rod. And the lightning rod goes down here and is grounded underground. So there you go. Those are all the pieces. So let's talk about specifically what each one really is. You having fun so far? Because I sure am. Now way up here, this measures precipitation. This is a tipping bucket range gauge with a magnetic reed switch. Model TE515MM by Texas Electronics. Has an accuracy of plus or minus 1% at five centimeters per hour or less. That measures our rain. Now this here is the pyranometer, and it measures solar radiation. Now you can know the term uh, pyranometer because of pyromaniac, the guy who sets things on fire, and Jim Morrison, our love is like a funeral pyre. So those are both pyre words. Now this is a SP Light 2 silicon photodiode detector by Kip and Zonin. It sits um, at this height, about six feet, has a response time of less than five nanoseconds. And this measures, like I said, solar radiation. 
from the sun. It's not so much now, but when it comes out, there's a heck of a lot. This here is a simple wind vane. It tells us the direction of the wind. It's a model O24A MET1, has an accuracy of plus or minus 5%. It measures intervals of one mile per hour as it records to the data logger. This is our weather vane. Now this is our ananometer. It measures wind speed. It's a model O14A MET1. It's a three cup ananometer. It utilizes a magnet activated reed switch whose frequency is proportional to the wind. It has an accuracy of about 0.25 miles per hour and can measure gusts up to 135 miles per hour. Anemometer. That's how you say it. Sometimes she spins pretty fast. Today, I don't know the wind speed, maybe 10, 15, but there she goes. Oh, sped up. Now this device, it measures air temperature and relative humidity. Now humidity is measured by an HMP 35C Fenwall thermistor Humicap H sensor made by Visala and modified by Campbell Scientific. You put this about, about four and a half feet above the ground and it will measure between 0% to 100% relative humidity. Now it also measures temperature. Now the temperature is measured by an HC2 S3 HygroClip 2 probe made by Rotronic. It has a range of negative 50 degrees to 100 degrees Celsius. So that'll pretty much cover our temperature here in Kodo. And both sensors are enclosed in a 12 plate naturally aspirated radiation shield, which you see here by RM Young. So that's our air temperature and relative humidity device. Now underneath the unit, if it's here, is a soil thermistor. It measures the soil temperature. It's a Fenwall Electronic W51J1 thermistor with a water resistant coating. It's six inches below the soil surface and it measures uh, plus or minus four degrees C or about 0.7 degrees F. So it's, pretty, um, it's a pretty good unit, but you can't see it because it's underground. This is our CR1000 data logger. Now it's mounted to the uh, tripod. It collects data each minute from each sensor. After an hour, it averages all the readings and stores these in its memory. Continues to do this from midnight to midnight each day. And after 24 hours, it calculates the daily averages and also stores all the individual data in the data logger, including the maximum and minimum daily temperatures and the relative humidities. So at 12 o'clock each night, the main Simis computer up in Sacramento starts requesting data from all the weather stations throughout the state one by one. If a weather station isn't working, it just skips it and goes to the next one. So at about 10 a.m., all the data from the previous day is uploaded to Sacramento. And you, sitting on your couch, can go on your computer and pull up the data. Now the main thing it calculates, or extrapolates, is evapotranspiration. And evapotranspiration is a combination of the evaporation of water off the soil and off the plants and the transpiration of water from within the plants. And with that data together, the evapotranspiration, farmers and agriculturists and humidity people and newscasters and lawyers and whoever they want can get the data to find out what's going on in the microclimate where this unit is sitting measuring all the data, the weather data. So there you go. That's what I call the WeatherMax 3000. Oh, but wait, there's more. Because up behind the tee box is another unit that measures more precipitation. So let's go up there and take a look. Now we have another weather station behind the tee box along Vista del Verde. And I'm not sure if it's still operated by Simis, but I guess we could just say it is for fun. So of course, 
It has the uh, anemometer measuring wind speed. Okay, it's got the little uh, device here, and that measures the air temperature and the humidity. And here is a rain gauge to measure, of course, rainfall. It all sits on a tripod. I think that device right in the middle there is just a, uh, a communication device to send up information from the datas, the data loggers or the thermistors um, or these other little sensors. Now for uh, maintenance on this uh, unit here, a technician visits it about every three to four weeks in the summer, every five to six weeks in the winter. Now he makes sure, or she makes sure, the units aren't damaged, and they check the operation, they clean it, and repair the parts. They recalibrate the sensors about every six months, and ideally the grass is cut three inches from the surface for the most accurate measurement. So before we get to our Simis website, I want to share with you two websites in Orange County you can get weather information from. This is the South Coast Research and Extension Center from the University of California. And down here we have three weather stations in Orange County. You can get data for. In Kodo, right here, it tells us the last four years of data. We have average temperatures, the high and the low. So January, 67 high, 44 average low. Rainfall, 2.13 inches and you can compare 2021 to the prior years. So this year in April, 71 degrees was the average high so far and 0.03 inches of rain, which is not very much compared to last year where we had the same average temperature about, but the rainfall was 4.93 inches, which is quite a lot compared to this year. If you wanna know more, you can click on, for example, April, and it tells you the readings for each day. So today is the 25th. So yesterday it was 67 degrees was the average high or the high. The high. And um, last year the high was 91 degrees. So it was pretty warm last year um, on this day yesterday. So that is from the South Coast Research and Extension Center. There's another fun website. This is from Weather Underground. This is a public website and it is a neighbor of ours who has his or her own weather station in the backyard. And it's located right here in Cota de Casa. And right now it says it's 63 degrees, but actually it's 62.8 degrees. Okay, ties a tiny bit of wind, very tiny bit of wind. DuPont, precipitation, vapor pressure, humidity. If we zoom in, you can see exactly where this weather station is. This is San Miguel. Here's the weather station. And here's the green on the first hole of the north course. So if you're golfing, you're putting away, uh, looks like uh, Mike just missed his putt. You zoom in real closely. But anyway, you can see that Here's the weather station that you can get very, very local temperatures for on a um, real-time basis. So let's go to the Simis weather station and I'll show you how that works. Here is the website where our weather station uploads data to. It's the Simis website at simis.water.ca.gov. It's a public website, so anybody can go to it. If you want more specific information, you can also log in as a user and get, the load, get specific information for trending and downloading to your spreadsheet and playing with the data. So the front page tells you all about the program um, for Simis, how the data is collected, how to retrieve the data, all sorts of good stuff. But let's jump right to the stations. Now here's a listing of all the active and inactive stations throughout California. We are number 245, so you have to jump to page 13 number 245, Cota de Casa. If you click here on the arrow, it tells you more specific information about our own weather station. Number 245, here's a view from the north, south, east, and west. 846 feet above sea level. It was established on October 7, 2015. 
tells you about the characteristics of the site, the turf, the houses, nearby sand traps, and also the zip codes which the weather station services. That's the information about the weather station. If you want to know from a map perspective where we are, here's a map of all the locations in California. And you want to find our location, which is 245, right here. Go to the Casa, and we zoom in closer, and we will find that it is at the far end of our golf course, one of the highest points in Kodo on the, on the golf course. It's at the ninth tee box or the ninth fairway of the north course, right here. All right, if you want to know the data, which is downloaded to the system, you want to find our site, which is 245. Go to the Casa. We could download the hourly report, the daily report, or the monthly report. So let's list the hourly report. And this is uh, limited data. Like I said, you get more data if you are a member. And this lists all the data from the last week. So today is the 24th. You see that's the 20th, the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. Today is actually 25th, but the data most current is the 24th. And it tells you uh, the time of day, evapotranspiration, the precip precipitation, vapor pressure, air temperature, relative humidity, dew point, wind speed, wind direction, and soil temperature. So if you notice here, it had zero precip precipitation all day. It did not rain yesterday. The solar radiation, it says uh, pretty much at six in the morning, the sun just started peaking above the horizon, causing solar radiation on the uh, thermistor. And you have seven o'clock, as you see, it goes higher and higher till you get 12 noon, one o'clock where the maximum solar radiation is apparent. And then it fizzles down to nighttime. And this is just the cycle, day-to-day -day cycle. Vapor pressure is pretty consistent throughout the day. Average temperature for yesterday was rather consistent between 55 degrees and 66 degrees. So you kind of get the information from this website and it helps you determine your watering levels and um, the condition of the weather on your crops, whether it's grass or whether it's avocados or something you might be growing on a farm. I mentioned you could also get the daily report and the monthly report if you want to compare, you know, this month to last month, you can um, get data for that as well. And this tells you the average daily totals, including let's say the maximum air temperature, the minimum air temperature, and so forth. So lots of good stuff you can get. You can have this information downloaded directly to your phone on a um, periodic basis or you can go find it and hunt it for yourself. So that is our weather station in Cota de Casa and how you can retrieve the information and pretty much everything you want. So thanks for watching another episode of my videos and hopefully I'll have some more coming to you soon. Thank you very much. We'll talk to you later, bye-bye.